Hey folks, Dave here, and welcome back to the Backyard Battlefield. This is my Real World Firearm series, and today we have another episode inspired by a Battlefield 1 DLC, specifically the recently released Turning Tides DLC. As you can see by this outfit right here, in that DLC, DICE added the Anzac faction, which is the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, to the game. However, our rifle today, as you can see over here, is going to be Italian. We've got a couple of Italian Carcano rifles. That's one of the cool parts about Battlefield though. You have actual factions that fought in the war, real bits of history, like the Anzac, and you also have real weapons, but you can use them however you want to. So in this DLC, DICE added a Anzac faction, but an Italian rifle. Today specifically, we're gonna be taking a look at the Italian Cavalry Carbine model of 1891. These rifles were known more commonly here in America as Carcanos. They were very, very popular after World War I and II as sporting rifles. About two or three million of these were made from the 1890s on through about the 1950s in Italy. It has a fantastically Italian name with the full designation being a cavalry carbine. And I'm gonna actually let my good Italian friend Giancarlo pronounce that for us. That is wonderfully Italian right there, much like the inventor of this rifle whose name was Salvatore Carcano. Just seems appropriate, right? There were a bunch of different models. There was a full-sized rifle model, which added probably a good uh, eight or so inches onto the end of this barrel. As you guys can see, this carbine is pretty tiny. There was a paratrooper version, which had this same length of barrel, but did not have the fixed bayonet. This being the cavalry carbine does have a attached bayonet like this. You just press the release button and you pull the bayonet out, flip it forward and lock. Still though, a very, very short rifle. We're gonna actually test and see how accurate the rifle still is because this one is in very rough shape. The bore has a little bit of rifling left, but uh, not a whole bunch. So we got a paper target at about uh, 30, 35 yards or so. We're just gonna see where we're hitting. Rather quickly here, we discovered a couple of issues with the carbine. Like I already mentioned, it was in real bad shape when I bought it with a lot of rust and a lot of pitting. And despite my best efforts to clean it up, we couldn't bring it back to its original accuracy or anything even close to it. Even at only about 25 yards with our test target here, there were signs that the rounds were keyholing as they went through the target. This means that the rifling is so far gone that it's not spinning the bullet enough to maintain its balance and it's tumbling end over end almost as soon as it leaves the barrel. Additionally, this carbine is so old that the trigger is in real bad shape. It's got a real sloppy trigger. Right in the middle of the trigger pull, there's a section where the trigger gets hung up and actually rotates slightly in the frame before it has a bit of a grungy spot and then it jumps backwards and then there's still a little bit more pull to be done before it drops the hammer to fire the round. That's a terrible trigger pull for trying to maintain any kind of accuracy. So we decided that we'd leave the carbine here, given its rough shape for anything that was up close, and we'd use Jeremiah's rifle that he had brought with him, the full-size Carcano rifle, for anything longer distance. Now, of course, guys, because the cavalry carbine does have the attached bayonet, just for extra immersion, you guys know me, I had to bring some extra special targets to test out the bayonet with.
as always, my arch nemesis is back. Two liter Sam's Club soda. That made the soda foam. You see that? It went all the way through it and it's not falling off the thing, off the log. Yeah, yeah. but it didn't fall it. off. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. I like that one. Man. Plus the bolt's getting a little sticky, so it's getting a lot harder to uh, to cycle without bringing it down first. That's a good finisher right there. This is a fun little carbine. I like it. It's really impressive that it's uh, as accurate as it is for being as old as it is and with how rough it was when I pulled it out of the box. Pretty fun. All of the Carcanos are chambered in 6.5 by 52. Most of the ammo is labeled as Carcano as well just because there are some other 6.5 calibers out there. And this is what the modern Spitzer bullets look like. These are a bit more round nose, they're soft tips, but the original rounds, the original 6.5 millimeter rounds that the Carcano was chambered in were completely round nosed. Most countries got rid of them pretty quickly because they don't fly very well in the air. The pointed tip, the Spitzer style bullet, is much more efficient. Interestingly, the Italians kept the round nose Carcano bullets all the way until 1938 almost up to the beginning of World War II, so they finally moved to a modern Spitzer bullet. The Carcano is loaded with N-block stripper clips, and it has an internal magazine. What's unusual, let's see if I can get the clip lined up right here, what's unusual about the Carcano is, unlike most rifles of this time period, it actually holds six rounds. So you put them on the top there, and try not to miss the groove in the back, that's the important part. Just push them straight back until it clicks like that. You want to get the back of the casing clicked into that groove. Even though these rounds didn't perform well for the Italians, they had some ammo manufacturing problems and some really inconsistent performance. The ability to have one extra round compared to most battle rifles of this period was a pretty cool advantage. Now that we're a little bit more dialed in, let's take some shots with the carbine on our World War I style targets out here. That's interesting, our bolt is uh, seizing up a little bit. There we go. Let's see what we got. We got one in the lower part of the chest here, or the upper part of the chest, lower part of the neck. The one right in the beard. You can see our shoot and see poking through right there. Oh wow, uh, two headshots here. Jeremiah, look at how the rubber, the rubber like seals the hole. That's really interesting. Look at the, the exit wound. It was like folded up maybe a little bit like that. Yeah. It's crazy though how the rubber on the front is so taut. The rubber like seals up. I was hoping to hit the glass, but I don't think it gets much more dead center than that. So after a couple of clips through it now, I'm getting more used to the trigger. It's definitely more manageable when you're standing up though versus 
trying to precision pull it when you're prone. I think when you can kind of lean into it standing up, it's easier just to pull back into your shoulder and do a more direct pull. Trigger's got a little wiggle in it, but again, it's manageable. I'm gonna go for this guy over here. That bolt needs to get stiffer. A lot stiffer. Gonna have to bathe this thing in oil. That was almost a glass, I think. This rifle in particular has a couple of really interesting engravings. It's hard to tell how old these might be, but I saw this when I was going to buy one of these Carcanos and I was like, that's just too unique. I gotta pick this one up. It appears to be a coiled Cobra. Not super well drawn, but that's kind of the charm of it, right? This rifle, as you can tell by the markings, has been imported and moved around a couple of times. So it could have seen service in World War I and World War II, perhaps in a militia after the war, and then imported to America. So it's hard to tell exactly you know, how old some of these markings might be. There's a couple of just really cool ones too. There's a engraving BM there at the front of the stock. And that looks like it was done with a knife of some kind. So again, some neat engravings on the rifle. It's just hard to tell how old they actually might be. You guys know you can buy Soviet gas masks off of Amazon with Amazon Prime. Two day shipping, that's a good deal. Affiliate links in the description. <laughs> You can see here guys where wooden stocks, as nice as they can look, aren't always the best idea. Because of the age of this rifle, I believe we've got a dugout in the stock inside of the magazine well where over the years rounds have dug a pit right there where they're trying to get stuck. So we'll feed that one slower. I'm pretty sure that's just where the stock's been uh, worn away at over the years from heavy usage. Check out the carbon mark on our bayonet right there. That's pretty neat. One more. It is pretty cool to have six instead of five. I think we hit something that time. As you guys can see, we got a good shot on the rim of the glass right there. One, two, three on the top. So one I think missed the head entirely. But for a uh, hundred year old rifle with not a lot of rifling left, not bad. This rifle is getting real toasty. So let's take a break from the range and look at the in-game rifle in Battlefield 1. As I said at the start of the video guys, one of the neat things about the Battlefield franchise is how DICE combines real history with the ability to use weapons however you want. What's also really neat is their attention to detail. Their weapon modelers and animators take actual trips to the range with the real weapons whenever they can, and this extra bit of research really shows in the detail and accuracy of their weapons in game. One of my favorite details for the Carcano is actually seen in the weapon selection screen as you're equipping your loadout. If you do not choose the bayonet for the rifle, you can still see it tucked away on the underside of the rifle, just like in real life. If you select the bayonet, it swings out correctly. Honestly, there's not much to say about the in-game rifle just because it is so incredibly accurate. Check out the sound effects and the animations for working the bolt and the muzzle reports. Pretty awesome, right? It has a nice punchy muzzle report and the bolt animations are beautifully done. Gameplay-wise, 
It's an interesting rifle to use because to balance the Carcano against the other bolt action rifles in the game, because it does have those six rounds, they kind of lowered the damage a bit. At range, the Carcano does a max of 54 damage. That means even with six rounds available to you, you're going to have to do a lot more follow-up shots compared to other rifles like the M95. As always, hats off to the devs for some accurate and well done work. Besides the cavalry carbine, we also have a sporterized version. Like I said, three million of these were made between World War I and II, and they became very, very popular rifles as uh, hunting rifles and just target shooting here in America. This one right here is a family heirloom provided by Jeremiah, Jerem Gaming. It's been his family since probably the 1950s, so just after World War II when these were uh, beginning to be imported into America. And it's sporterized because while it is the full length rifle barrel with the original rifle sights, as you guys can see, the entire stock has been re-bedded into a full hunting style stock. Uh, there's no upper part of the foregrip here to cover the barrel. It's been completely rebedded. But unlike my Rust Bucket Edition carbine, uh, this one actually has the bluing still in good shape on the receiver. It's in very, very good shape, actually. These rifles are also a bit infamous because a sporterized Carcano like this one was used to kill President Kennedy. Next up, we're pulling out the rifle once again while the carbine cools down. We're going to attempt to hit a 12-inch steel gong way out there. Uh, it's right at roughly 100 yards, but it's also almost straight uphill. Got a bit of a mountainside here. What's interesting about these Carcanos in long range is in World War I, there are documented, quite a few documented sniper versions that were uh, equipped with scopes uh, for snipers in World War I. But in World War II, there are actually zero of these rifles that were given scopes officially for that war. It makes me wonder if perhaps just the fact that these rifles themselves aren't amazingly accurate, maybe that played into it, and the Italians decided not to even worry with uh, Carcano sniper versions in World War II, and perhaps use German rifles instead. We're going to go for straight iron sights though, try to hit that gong. Our star is down. Even your magazine well, Jeremiah, <laughs> works a lot better. Spot for me, Jeff. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got to remember, too, you can't just put the front post in the notch because that starts at 300 yards and goes up to <laughs> goes up to 1,000. I don't know who they're kidding. So we're going to aim low with the front post. We got three rounds left, no hits yet. We've been uh, below and then above and then above to the right. So I'm gonna go with our shooting bench here and see if we can get it a little bit closer. Perhaps hit that gong. Should we get around in the chamber? This is still a super awkward angle. Shooting almost, what is that, like 30 degrees uphill? There we go. So yeah, with these 300 yard sights, you've got to aim roughly about a foot at 100 yards below to hit. Before we called it a day at the range, I decided to have a fun competition between the Carcano rifle and my Austro-Hungarian M95 straight pull bolt action rifle, which holds five rounds instead of the Carcano 6. I wanted to compare the fire rate between the straight pull bolt action on the M95 to the Carcano's more traditional bolt action. I grabbed the M95, Jeff took the Carcano, and here's how it went. We're gonna do it on go, okay? One, two, three, go!
As it turns out, guys, if you try to rapidly fire 100-year-old rifles, occasionally they don't want to cooperate. Plus, Jeff's got two extra rounds between those two reloads. But uh, it is cool that with the N95, you can keep your sights basically mostly on target. Although, my target was so close, I was basically just firing like this. I was shooting about 20 yards that direction. Pretty fun, though. The neighbors are wondering what war just started. There you have it, guys. There is the real-life Carcano rifle, as seen in the Battlefield 1 Turning Tide DLC, and now in real life. Thank you to Germ Gaming for filming for us today, as well as Jeff for hosting and joining us for our fire rate competition. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.